with HB pencil, I draw the vertical line from the top of the paper until the end. And after I check with a plumb line, if I have done a perpendicular row. Now I can join all the signs with the straight lines. And I will have a vague but precise in terms of proportion idea of the head. I attempt to figure out the main angle of the lines. Okay, now is the time to go in through the details. And because the proportions are almost correct, I can go forward, but I still check, as you see, if my features are in a proper level. And once I established the lower part of the nose, I can draw the filter room and I start to draw the mouth. And I change my point of view and the perspective of my idea. And I like working with my instinct. Once I'm sure about the beginning of the filter room, I will draw the top of the mouth. I also increased the shade on the left side of the upper lips to get the idea of 3D. This method of drawing is very effective. It can be used to improve our skills of measuring by the rope and by eyes. Also, negative spaces are the protagonist. Drawing from outside to inside can be helpful to avoid designing a preconcept drawing that come from childhood. Often we are convinced that we have seen what we are drawing, but in reality we copy an idea that doesn't correspond to the nature's phenomenon. There is two important aspects that you have to take in consideration. The ability to take proportion with the rope and it is easy because you have to just to compare one point to another by extend the line. And the second aspect, when you report the mark on top of your drawing, you have to also draw the outline of the design and judge the distance from one point to another with your instinct. And you can do a both and you can shift from one idea to another. When I do an exercise like this, maybe it will come up a question in mind. Why I have to do the curly hair exactly as in the picture? I can change a little bit. I can do something different, but the answer is not. I want to do exactly the same because in a drawing beautiful like this, I want to investigate how the artist simplified the idea of the curly hair in a way that was unique. And even though apparently looks very easy, it isn't. Okay, um, how many times you have done the hair so bad and they look unnatural? Copy the way of the whole master did the hair is the best way to learn. Try to be rigorous and not to give in to the temptation to do as you please. To be humble allowed you to understand and learn from artists as Bouguereau, 
Rafael Leonardo, they used to have a unique way how to do the hair. I will have a uh, great advantage if I understand the way how Julian drawing book simplified the concept of the uh, shape of the hair. To be neutral is the purpose of this exercise because it's easier to change everything and do whatever I like to do. But the difficulty is to respect the previous concept of the artist and draw in a deeply way until you will not see the differences from one drawing to another. Slow observation is the key, is the secret of this kind of exercise. For example, after two, three hours of uh, drawing, I can take a break and I don't, I don't go fast because I need to take a distance from the drawing and when I come back after one day, I may see special details that escaped me. If I go fast, I will not be able to get all the details in the right position. One of my students saw the drawing that I'm going to do in the studio last week and she asked me if I traced the, the drawing and I was surprised because it was not finished and there were many mistakes that she had not noticed. And also it became normal to trace a drawing and this is wrong. This is really bad because you will never gonna learn if you trace a drawing and also you will never understand the passages that the artist did in order to achieve a very high quality of drawing. Too often social media, TV promote the idea that tracing the drawing is normal. In the most popular TV program Sky Portrait of the Year, there are many artists. They use an app on iPad with a grid that allows increase the dimension of the drawing on top of the canvas easily. They have a model in front of them and they spend all the time in watching the screen of the iPad. It is insane for the brain of the artist. I wonder why the jury of the competition encouraged the artists to work in this way. The jury should positively evaluate those who draw the model from life as it has always been. Sorry, maybe I shouldn't say these things, but it is not life drawing, it is not life painting, it is something different. Okay. And we have to say uh, at the audience, because otherwise they believe that it is the true and it isn't. There is a substantial difference between those who can draw a realistic portrait from the model and those who instead copy a flat photograph image that is already in two dimensions. In other words, if you need a grid to enlarge a drawing that you have on your iPad on a slightly larger dimension on top of your canvas, it means that you don't know how to draw. Drawing from life is the hardest things a painter should be able to do. It requires many skills such as understanding the nature in constant change. You need to know how to observe and get the idea of the thoughts of the model. By the time during the session, he 
changes, his expressions, and also the inner world of the artists will not going to be the same. We are living in a river of emotions that we can try to catch it in the portrait. And also, it is really interesting the psychological aspects of the sitter that I would like to represent in my painting. And mathematical thoughts and the first level of syllogisms by Aristotle are often used and the equation and the logic are always protagonists during the workflow. That's why many students and artists they don't want to make any effort. It's easier to copy a flat picture because all these um, issues are already resolved uh, in a, a flat image. Okay, I don't have anything against who wants to work in this way, but in a, a competition has a sky portrait of the year, the jury should take in consideration this important skills that every portrait painter should have. And believe me, it takes years to master it. The last two questions that I would like that someone from the jury of the Sky Portrait of the Year should reply to me. How can an artist become a winner if it doesn't know how to draw from life? And furthermore, how can you compare those who paint from life with those who paint from the screen of the iPad. If I could rate it from 1 to 10, I would say drawing from a screen with a grid equals 2, and drawing from a life equals a score of 10. Imagine two runners participating in an obstacle course. The line of those who draw from the screen is as if they run without obstacles, or you can compare them. Details of the tear. I attempt to move it a little bit two millimeters higher. I know I, it was okay even before, but I asked myself why, if you see a little bit differences, don't try to move it and do exactly as it is. And I do it, even if it costs me a lot of energy, because I have already done this area many times. If the contour of the shadow shape is almost right, I can darken the shadow by adding levels of chiaroscuro, but never by applying too much pressure on my pencil. I can achieve this by using different pencils, or graphite grades, blending techniques, or adding multiple layers to the area. It's essential to keep in mind that adding too much pressure may cause the pencil lead to break or damage the paper, and also it can affect the final look of the artwork. To prove if you have done a good job, even when you have darkened a part of the drawing until the darkest point, you should always be able to erase it and go back. The primary difference between Greek and classical art and the post-Renaissance mannerism of Florence is how shapes and proportions are depicted. Greek art is defined by its emphasis on balance, symmetry and proportion, as well as its attention to realistic anatomical details. On the other hand, mannerism is known for its greater freedom of shape, 
with more extensive use of imagination and decoration and a greater emphasis on artificial beauty and aesthetic impact. Philosophically, Greek and classical art represents an idea of perfection and harmony, while mannerism represents a stronger emphasis on individuality and personal artistic expression. To sum up, Greek classical art is associated with the idea of natural beauty and proportionality, whereas mannerism is related to the idea of artificial beauty and exaggeration of standard features. Therefore, the concept of mannerism can be considered modern as it represents a greater emphasis on individuality and personal artistic expression than classical art. Mannerist artists abandon classical forms and proportions to express a more personal experimental aesthetic. Additionally, during the Renaissance, artists began to view themselves as a creative individuals rather than just executing commissioned work. Mannerism, his reflection of this new self-awareness and new artistic freedom, it can be considered a modern concept as it represents a unique creative perspective where the artist expresses themselves and their creativity, rather than adhering to a classical rules. I know there is many uh, approach that we can use when we start to do a drawing, but I think it is crucial to know different styles that became from the past. And if we know them, I can take a decision, I can say to myself, I want to draw in a classical way or in a minorist way, and so on. Okay, have you ever asked yourself what kind of technique are you going to use when you draw? What kind of philosophical approach are you going to use when you start to draw? Okay, I think uh, the lesson is finished. Uh, you can continue to watch the video until the end. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you for joining me in today's lesson. I encourage you to first subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn on notification so you never miss a video. Additionally, I invite you to subscribe to my Patreon page to see the whole video of this lesson and other exclusive content. Thank you so much and see you at the next video tutorial.